Hello, and welcome to the APA CRS here in Seoul, South Korea. Today, we have a very renowned guest with us, Dr. Oliver Findel, who is Congress President of the ESCRS this year. He is also a worldwide renowned researcher in the field of ocular surgery, and we look forward to speaking with him. Dr. Findel, welcome to the program. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Great to be here with you. Could you please briefly introduce yourself for our audience? So I'm Oliver Findel. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Um, I'm a cataract vitro-retinal surgeon um, and also do corneal surgery, so you know, a little of, of, of a few things. I'm actually president of the ESUS at the moment, uh, which, is, uh, which is a great thing to do. Um, and otherwise, what should I say, I, I, have, a, I have a research interest since mm. many, many years. Um, IOLs, um, biometry. I have a private practice on the side, but actually I work in the hospital, Hanusch Hospital. So that's, that's what I do. Well, Dr. Findel, you were amongst the first surgeons to implant Technus IHANTS. Can you describe the characteristics of the Technus IHANTS IOL? So um, the lens uh, is, is not just a monofocal lens, but it's what we call monofocal plus or enhanced monofocal. So the lens has, um, let me say, a central zone which has a little more add but it's a continuous change from the periphery to the center, so you don't see a zone, you don't see any rings. Um, so you will not be able to discriminate that lens from, from the standard monofocal lens. They look exactly the same, same material, everything else the same. But when you look at a power map of the lens, what you do see is that in the center there's a little more power. And what that does is it, it essentially does two things. Um, it will increase what we call, I call the landing zone. So that means the focus curve is a little broader, you know, even if you're like quarter of a half a diopter off. In minus or plus, the patient still has a very good unaided visual acuity. So that's the one thing. And the second thing is that if you really hit emetropia, or if you go a little monovision on the other eye, a little minus, like half a diopter, 0.75, these patients actually have pretty good intermediate vision as well. Um, so it turns out that there's quite a few of these patients um, who really you know, can you know, see things pretty well at arm's length, especially you know, PC, household work, that kind of work, can navigate really well without glasses and essentially need glasses for real, for real reading or small print uh, or when the lighting is bad, like with many other lenses as well, but actually are otherwise pretty comfortable, have pretty good functional vision. Now your research interests also include glaucoma, for patients with compromised eyes, will Technus IHANTS be suitable for them? So, you know, we, so we do, well, obviously we have glaucoma patients, we have, you know, a lot of uh, VR patients, uh, macular patients, um, and, on, and on diabetics. So I, I use the IHANTS as my standard monofocal lens, so I, I don't discriminate um, between, you know, patients. I don't have any inclusion or exclusion criteria. I really use this as my monofocal lens, and, and I'm not selective, uh, and, and I have not had any problems with that in, in, in the past. Mm. And again, we have a lot of patients who have comorbidities, so it's not that we're dealing with only normal patients by, by God, no. So in, in our department, you know, we see the whole, the whole um, variety of patients with all these um, other issues, but we use the lens and we have not seen any drawbacks. Good to hear. So just as an estimate, how many Technus IHANTS IOLs have you used in your practice? So I think we actually, we stopped counting, but, but, um, but at some point, you know, we started, I think it was um, nearly four years ago. Um, and so we've now implanted something like 18 to 19,000. That's mm. my estimate. Not, not only me, but you know, my whole team. Um, and and, and at, at per year now, we're using something in the orders of four and a half, five, five and a half thousand. Um, so, so, you know, it, again, it's our standard lens. And how are the outcomes and patient satisfaction following implantation of this IOL? Yeah, so the outcomes, you know, I mean, it's, as I said, is a little more than you would expect for a monofocal lens, mm -hmm. a standard monofocal, because you have more patients with good unaided visual acuity. And again, quite a few patients, especially if you hit emetropia, that means the biometry and power calculation is good, who actually um, have pretty good intermediate vision. So I think from that perspective, the, the, the patients are pretty happy. Now, I also have to say that we don't, let me say, sell the lens as something of added value. So we really okay. use it as monofocal. So we don't tell the patients that they're going to have a special lens, uh, meaning that the expectations are also not high. Mm. And then it's really great because if you over deliver after having not raised any expectations, these patients are especially happy. If you actually, you know, um, so let me say, you know, tell the patients about this may be an added value, added benefit, 
the patients have expectations, they may misunderstand as well. And then if you don't really deliver that, then patients may be a little more unhappy. Right. We don't have that because we're not doing that. We do that, of course, when we use trifocal lenses, when we use EDOF lenses, then obviously because the patients you know, may have to co-pay or whatever the, you know, the idea is, sure. then you have to start talking about these, uh, these um, you know, added values or added benefits. We don't do that, and so I think that actually um, raises, um, um, let me say, happiness, if you want. Technus iHands Torque 2 was recently made available in the Asia-Pacific region. How would you describe the Torque 2 platform? Yeah, so the Torek 2 platform, what it, what it did is essentially, um, you know, we had some cases, not many, but a few cases with the old, uh, let me say, Torek uh, um, um, Technus lens where we had some rotations. Um, mm. And there was also the one or other publication which showed slightly higher, um, you know, uh, uh, rates of, of some rotation. Not much, but a little. And so obviously that always makes you, um, you know, a little worried and, and especially in myopic eyes who tend to have larger capsule bags where in general, you know, rotation may be easier, you get a little worried about that. So Johnson Johnson actually reacted quite quickly to that um, issue and they uh, added a frosted edge to the haptics. And from my perspective, that has eradicated the problem. So actually now we've actually done a trial just very recently uh, where we looked at rotational stability. So we took the last image of, of the video, of the intraoperative video, mm. and then obviously over time, one hour after surgery, one week, three months, and we compared them and did a complete overlay. And we saw that the rotation was less than two degrees. Mm. I think 1.4 degrees, if I remember exactly correctly. And actually this is just going for publication. And so this is really a lens now, I would say, which is probably one of the highest, if not the highest, rotational stability of the lenses I know, um, which are available in Toric. So I think they did a really good job and, and, and I'm, I'm really happy with that. Do you have any last comment on the impact the Technus iHands and Technus iHands Toric 2 has had on your practice? Well, I think, it, yeah, the impact is for, for me is quite clear that, you know, I think this, this idea of having, and you notice that after you've implanted, let me say, 40, 50, 60 eyes already, that you have more patients who just have a pretty good unaided visual acuity, who will be able to read the 2020 line with no major issues. Um, and, and even if they're just quarter diopter off or half a diopter off, they can still read that. And I think that is, is, is valuable enough. So that these patients really, I think the spectacle independence for distance is, is simply better, is more. And then the other thing is, as I said before, that if you really hit emetropia, then, and, and especially if you do, like, let's say, minus half or minus 0.75 diopters of, 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 of monovision, which I always like to do anyhow, these patients really have pretty good intermediate vision. And there's some who actually have you know, pretty good reading vision even under good lighting holding a little further away. So we measured that in, 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 in you know, looking at, at, at reading performance with the Salzburg Reading Desk, which is like a special device where we can read, we can see the exact distance to the monitor. And, and we saw that you know, they, they tend to read at 46, 47 centimeters, so mm. more than you would you know, otherwise expect, but still pretty good. Most patients have that length, arm's length, even women, smaller women have that arm's length and, and will, will still be able to read with good lighting. And that's always critical as we know, um, also with trifocal technology. So, you know, I think that's something you shouldn't expect. You should not raise that expectation, but actually quite a few actually achieve that. So I, um, and, and the toric does the same job. So actually I now also, you know, I, even the stigmatism of 0.75 diopters, I often will correct with, with, with a toric because it just gives them that slightly better um, acuity. Dr. Findel, thank you so much for joining the program. Pleasure, Matt.